Hi, I'm Dr. Rich Petrowski. I'm a general dentist with over 25 years of experience, and I'm teaching you about dentistry and teeth so you can have a very nice smile. In this video, I'm going to talk about a common question that I get both from patients and viewers. Can I get my dental crown repaired? If they have a problem with the crown and there's some issues with it, they always wonder, why do I need a new crown? Why can't you just fix the one I have? Well, the short answer is no. Usually we can't repair the crown. You, they fail for a reason. You have had problems. There's usually a specific reason that uh, it needs to be replaced and it can't be fixed. So now that I gave you the short version without you having to fast forward to the end of the video, let's go into the details and the long version as to what's going on with crowns, what a crown is, and we'll discuss everything and any questions or comments you have, please leave them down in the comment section and I will reply to them as best as I can. So first up, the reason why we can't replace, we can't repair a crown is that there's very little you can do in someone's mouth to repair a crown. Usually you have to remove the crown to get to the problem and to remove the crown, it tends to need to be cut off to get access to the tooth underneath. Now there are some types of dental crown removers such as the pneumatic crown remover, uh, which is basically just like a slide hammer like you would dent puller type slide hammer that's pneumatic powered. They even make one with little weights to try to pop the crown off. Results aren't that great. I did make a video about them. I'll leave a link up here. And there's also another type called the Richwell. It's basically like a really sticky jujube type of thing that you put in hot water, have the patient bite down to it, and have them open up. Again, it's hit or miss whether or not it works. Nowadays, crowns are usually, the two main materials that I uh, make dental crowns out of are either zirconia for back teeth, which is a type of ceramic that's very, very tough and strong. It can be cemented in. And the other one I use a lot is a material called Emax. That's the brand name, generic name is lithium disilicate. It's basically another type of ceramic that looks really good, but it gets, it can be bonded onto the tooth. Both of these materials generally tend to be milled out of a solid block of the material. So it's made, it's custom cut by the lab and custom made to fit the tooth. Older crowns, older crowns tend to be either full, full cast gold crowns, which is just having a gold tooth, it's all metal, there's no porcelain on it. And another type called porcelain fused to metal. Basically, it's a thin shell of metal. It tends to be white gold, but there can also be non-precious metals covered in porcelain so that it looks like a tooth. Now, what's the most common reason that a crown needs to be, me needs to be repaired or replaced? The most common reason is there's a cavity underneath it. Cavities won't form on the crown material itself, but they tend to form at the crown margin. That's the area where the crown meets the tooth when it covers it. So it's right there at that margin. When the crown is first made, dentists are very concerned making sure that it, the crown has a really good fit onto the tooth, that there's no little gaps or anything. Because uh, if you do have a gap, there's an open margin, that's a spot where decay can start. So we try to avoid those. But again, because there's, it's a tight fit, there's still a microscopic little gap that gets filled in with the cement, but that's where a cavity will tend to start. So now if a person has a cavity and you try to drill that cavity out in that spot and try to repair it, now you're going to have a big hole when you remove the decay there. And you can try to patch it with the filling, but then you're trying to fill using the filling material to kind of bridge that big hole there doesn't work very well. And also, a lot of times too, these cavities tend to happen in between the teeth. So that's an air, not an area where you can really get to with a crown. On a natural tooth, when somebody has a cavity in between the teeth, we just drill through the biting surface and get to it that way and then just replace the part of the tooth we removed with a filling. With a crown, you're basically drilling a huge hole into the crown to get to where the cavity is and you're compromising the strength of the crown and also the sealing ability of the crown. 
So it's, better, it's more beneficial to just replace the crown with a new one once the decay is removed. Another reason why it's necessary to remove them, remove the crown before getting to the decay is with the crown out of the way, I can actually see. A lot of the materials that crowns are made of, specifically gold, porcelain fused to metal, and zirconia are what's called radio opaque. On an x-ray, it just shows up as white. So you can't see underneath it with x-rays. And so if you're trying just to kind of patch it and drill a little hole in there, you're, as a dentist, you're just working blind. You can't see what's going on. By removing the crown, you can see the tooth all around and clean up all the decay. You can make sure that all the decay is removed. Now, the second reason that a crown needs to be replaced is usually because it fractures. So uh, the newer all porcelain types, Zirconia, Emacs, there's several other brands too, which we won't go into. They'll tend to fail, either crack all the way through or a little chip will come off it. Again, once that happens, if it cracks all the way through, it needs to be replaced. You can't just glue the pieces back together. Same thing if a little ch bit of the porcelain chips off the surface of it, there's no great way to rebond to it in the mouth. On the older types of crown, the por porcelain fused to metal, the porcelain was stuck onto the metal by actually being baked in an oven, just how you would make a ceramic a uh, cup or plate, once it's shaped, you gotta stick it in a kiln to fire it. Dental labs do the same thing. They build the porcelain up, stick it in a, uh, in a small little dental kiln, fire it, and it hardens. Once it's in the mouth, you, you know, obviously you can't stick the person's head into a kiln to help repair the porcelain. Any of the uh, in-the-mouth bonding agents tend not to work very well. Old gold crowns, full gold crowns, where they just there's no uh, porcelain on them at all, it's just metal. I have seen them fail as well through uh, just wearing out. Patients, I've had p people with 40-year-old gold crowns that they've been using you know, gold on a back tooth, and they'll eventually, because the metal is soft enough, they will wear a hole through the biting surface of it. Sometimes that could be patched with a filling, most of the time, again, it's a better idea just to replace it if they've worn it through it that much because if it's thin in that spot, I'm sure there's going to be other places where it's just as thin and is going to wear again. So are there any times when a camp crown can be repaired? Well, 25 years ago when I first started practicing, when it was common to do full gold crowns and porcelain fused to metal crowns, when you had a new, brand new crown back from the lab and you're trying it in and the was the, the fit wasn't that great. It was uh, what's called an open contact, the place where the two teeth touch. If the crown wasn't quite touching, you could actually send the porcelain fused to metal crown back to the lab and they would just add more porcelain to it. And then, they, and then you bring it back, they would send it back to me. I try it in and now it would fit properly. Same thing with a full gold crown. If the contact was open, it means it wasn't touching the tooth next to it. Again, I could send it back to the lab. They could actually solder some more metal onto it, uh, add some gold to it, and it would, have a, it would touch again. And then we could cement that. If somebody has an old porcelain fused to metal crown that just happens to fall out and some porcelain is chipped off it, you would think that, oh, I could just send this to the lab and they can add some more porcelain, fire it in their kiln, and it'd be good as new. Unfortunately, once a porcelain fused to metal crown has been in the mouth for any length of time, it actually starts absorbing moisture from the person's mouth. And when you have the lab try to add more porcelain to it, when they're firing it in the kiln, what will happen is that moisture that's embedded into the rest of the porcelain will start to, start to uh, vaporize. It'll basically boil off and you'll start getting air bubbles in the rest and it ends up ruining the rest of the porcelain. So ideally, they would to properly repair it, they would have to strip off all the old porcelain and add brand new porcelain to the crown. But then that also makes you wonder, well, why did the crown chip in the first place? Was there something wrong with the crown? Improper design, was the porcelain too thin? Was the porcelain too thick? And that's why it cracked. Did the person bite down on a olive pit unexpectedly? Or, you know, a chicken bone, something like that? So a lot of times it's just easier to make a brand new crown. You can take the old crown off, clean it all up, 
and have a brand new crown made and the person's gonna be better off. With the newer crowns, Emacs and Zirconia, when I'm trying those in and if something's a little off, it doesn't fit, it doesn't, you know, it has an open contact, doesn't touch the tooth next to it, if the bite's uh, not touching, there's no way that the, the way those types of crowns are made, they're milled out of a solid block of the material. So the lab can't just add to it because the new material won't stick to it. If there's an issue there, actually I have to tell the lab send, to have them make me a brand new one and tell them what the issue is so they can adjust it on the milling parameters on the computer program to bulk it up in that area so the computer can mill out a new crown and then it should fit properly. Well, so there's the long answer, and that's kind of a long answer. There's a lot that can go wrong. There's a lot of reasons why you can't fix a dental crown, and you, you're better off just replacing it at the end of the day if you have an issue with it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I try to get to most of them as much as I can. It gets a little difficult at times. There's been so many. And please hit that thumbs up button and uh, subscribe if you're enjoying my content. It really helps me out. It makes me feel good to know that I'm actually helping people by putting this information out there and just giving people more knowledge so that when they go into the dentist, they ha they'll have an idea of what the dentist is telling them, what's being done to their teeth, rather than just sitting there with their mouth open, not knowing what's happening. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.